Okay, so first of all, I'd like to say hello and welcome. And second of all, I'd like to say that this is about space time and density. So I wrote myself a few little questions like to answer. So like what I thought space time was. So because like I struggle to think what I'm going to say next. So I thought it'd be better if I just wrote myself a little few questions and some ideas so I could, you know, reference them and talk about them. So yeah, the first question, my memory is terrible, what I thought space time was. So I originally thought space time was space and time. So bendy space time would be space around me now, time around me now, mass and eat me now, bendy, show me, don't see nothing happening. So that was pretty much where I thought of bendy space time. It's a concept. You can't bend space, you can't bend time, you can't bend bendy space time. So no gravity. Um I don't believe mass attract mass because you know, put two masses together, they're not attracting. Unless they're magnets. Um so that's what I thought space time was. What I think it is now. Um that's a hard one, so it's complicated, it's hard to understand, so it's not what I, originally what I thought. It is hard to explain, so even when I wrote this I still don't know how to explain it. So basically it's like you put a mass in space time, it bends time, and causes acceleration and things to fall to the centre of mass. Uh, I know it sounds ridiculous, it does to me too. It's it's uh, very mind boggling. So the best way that I can probably show you and I did do some drawings. Um, basically let's see if I've got any paper. Uh, my notebooks are talking tight and not good notes. Yeah, I've got that. Okay, so bendy space time is essentially uh, I'll show you and then show you. So you've got space and you've got time. Uh, and an object will move in a straight line through space and time and essentially float. Yeah, no downward thing. And then we have the same again, space and time. But this time when a mass gets added, like a big mass, then it starts to curve and fall to the ground. So that's essentially bendy space time. Um, yeah, it still sounds ridiculous even saying it now. Uh, for me, I don't believe bendy space time is the reason for gravity. So to me, mass attracting mass is a lot more reasonable than bendy space time. And <laughs> I can understand bendy space time and I can understand the general, the, the theory of general relativity in the sense of time changing, time warping with by mass. Um, but I can't understand how it accelerates to the centre of mass, why and how that would happen. So for me, uh, I could think of, so if let's say we had a round earth, and go with a global consensus of bendy space time. So we've got the Earth. Okay, space time normally straight across. But because the, the Earth or the mass is there, it bends. And the, the bend is so close steep to the mass that it steeps down because it's so close to the mass that it falls into the ground, the object that's travelling in space time. But then when you have one further away in higher elevation, space time is curved less 
could just go over away from the mass and then theoretically you could follow up the toe all the way around and essentially create an orbit. So that's essentially what I was thinking. A lot of people are already going to say I'm wrong, but that's the best way it makes sense to me. Um, I mean, apparently you could have, you could believe in satellites and GPS being up there and things. Apparently you could have a clock down here on Earth and a clock up there on a satellite and the clock up there will tick faster. So... It won't be much faster. Um, but it still goes faster. And I was th I was essentially thinking one might be speed could cause this, you know. Everything in space is moving, we can't have a stationary clock, so we can't test it. Maybe when we have a stationary clock, time ceases to exist and speed is what causes time. But that can't be possible because if you believe in the girl birth and you believe in orbits, then the ones orbiting closer will have to uh, have a faster velocity than ones orbiting at a higher elevation. So, no, that can't be possible. Speed cannot be the cause of the time change. It must be the distance from the mass. Um, and that makes sense. So in, in that sense, the theory of general relativity, I can understand the mass of Einstein. Uh, it makes sense. If you believe the GPS, the time changes. Um, well, maybe if we could do this experiment ourselves, where time changes, but it isn't actually that much of time change, I don't believe. Uh, but yeah, apparently time changes, and in that case, Einstein would be right in his mass bend space stream. However, I don't think in his mass bend space stream he meant gravity, or if he did mean gravity, I don't see it working as gravity. I can see it working as bending time, but I can't see it as, you know, reason things fall to the ground. Um, for me, I was thinking, because uh, obviously I've had a lot of chats with Professor Phil Bell and they actually told me among other people about the space stream and Benny space stream and what it was and how I had it all wrong to begin with. Um, and there's a, no, a lot, just like Professor Phil Bell just said, it's a model. So you can make predictions with it, the predictions work. So the model's correct. But then that takes me to the quote that uh, Tesla says, which is something about. Um, Uh, of replacing mathematics for experiments. So instead of doing experiments, they, they replace it with mathematics and say, mathematics checks out, so that's right, instead of actually experimenting. So that could be kind of similar. I know they say they have done so, so many experiments, but like, I've been told not to think of it as a medium, not, not to think of it as an invisible thing, this space stream. And for me, I think of it, or I did think of it like a river, so you put a stone or a mass into the river and the river gets deflected or trickles down slower. So like a stream and then the water trickles down slower and it gets deflected around. I was thinking maybe space time was that, but he doesn't want me to think of it as a medium or an invisible thing. Um, but that's what made sense to me. Um, yeah. Okay, another thing that don't make sense to me with the bendy space time is the buoyancy. So if you've if you've got space time as gravity and it makes things fall nine point eight one meters per second squared, then you've got buoyancy which makes things go up. And it's also got G in the vector, and G is the bendy space time. So does that mean that buoyancy is the unbending of space time? If gravity and things falling is the bending? And things rising should be the unbending, or we've got matter which makes space time bend, so then we need antimatter to make it unbend and make things rise. But again, doesn't seem logical or plausible. So to me, the density thing makes a lot more sense than that, like the relative density, and they can't really debunk it because it's right. And they just say, 
the only thing is it's not a force like it hasn't got a vector so because it hasn't got a vector it's not a force but it makes sense and they can't debunk it because they know it's right it's just that they think that it's right because of an external force of gravity and I understand what they're saying because density in a way in some of the arguments that they make sense that it is mass instead of density but density and mass are one and the same so density is mass per unit volume or mass per volume so if you've got dense if you've got mass per volume for density then essentially it's still mass because it's mass per volume so the only difference is the volume so technically density and mass are exactly the same thing but the only thing that changes is the volume so yeah there's that too uh, I do believe somebody could make an equation for density and actually do it with including the volume and somehow make a vector area. I do believe that equation can actually be done. Um, it's almost like a string theory. Uh, they actually came out with Einstein's equations in their string theory, so does that mean string theory is right too? Because from what I know about it, like, I've done less research into string theory, but like they managed to get Einstein's equations of, theory, of uh, general relativity from their string theory equations. So does that mean that they're one in the same, that they're both right? It's string theory and it's, you know, um, the general theory of relativity the same, one in the same? I don't know. And then they're looking for a graviton. Uh, why would you be looking for a graviton if you know what gravity is? You've got the cause. Bendy space time, you've got the effect, objects falling. So you've got the cause and effect, so why then look for a graviton? If you know what it is and why it does it, why are you looking for a graviton? That to me tells me that you don't know what gravity is because you wouldn't be looking for a graviton. Because you know the cause or you know the effect already. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but... Um, gas has mass, so uh, I did do a video on this. Well, well, I have them at some point. I'll bring it out. Um, so, gas has mass and uh, expands in all directions, as you've seen in one of my videos, or you will see. Um, so, not mass attracting mass. Um, And yeah, the only other one was the space time of mass. So for me, I would think volume would be more important than the mass. So like if you could have a, a, a big massive mass in a small amount of volume, and then a big volume with less mass, and like you would think the bigger volume would, you know, un, un, even distribute the space time and you know, cause uneven distribution in that um, displace more space time, then it's fast forward. You think volume will be important in that, but apparently it's not. So, yeah, I don't know what's so special about mass, to be honest. Um, but yeah, those are some of my thoughts. Um, thank you for listening. Take care and stay safe.